Welcome to another edition of the Night Sky this week for June 1st, 2021. We've got lots of things in the night sky to talk about this week, so why don't we jump in? sky set up here for uh, a typical sunset. Uh, this is about the latitude where New York, Washington, Rome, Tokyo is approximately. So you may see something slightly different from the setup that I have here, but pretty much the same. It's looking towards the, uh, the western sky. And uh, if we put it to sunset specifically, you'll notice two planets pinning down the western sky and that is venus and mercury now mercury and venus are very low to the horizon i'm gonna make it a little bit darker here and so it'll easier to see so this is you need a good vantage point where you can see towards the western sky low 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 uh, to the to the west right as close to the horizon as you can and you'll notice a faint star underneath a very bright star the bright one easy that's planet venus our neighboring world and the innermost planet the planet closest to the sun is also visible it looks like a faint star-like object and that is what we call mercury now mercury is something that's visible to the naked eye but it is a, always a challenge because you could see the glow of the sunset you see that all that glow it can get lost very easily, that faint star-like object. There it is, I'm zooming in on it, you can see. But what will help for sure is a pair of binoculars. So if you sweep this area underneath Venus, which is very easy to see with the naked eye, underneath that you sweep it and you'll pick up a faint star-like object just underneath Venus. That is planet Mercury really cool to think that that is something that's visible uh, right now uh, in our skies and this is any time this week but I'll tell you this the longer that you wait if you don't get clear skies or you say well I'll wait a few days mercury is sinking this week all week so if I magically kind of make this uh, change over the days like this is Wednesday um, there's Thursday there's Friday same time you see, notice that? Venus is climbing higher in the sky and we're losing Mercury, right? Going back again. This is Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. You see that? We're losing Mercury. So really your best chance to seeing Mercury right now is going out tonight if you can. If you've got clear skies, about a half hour your local sunset is when you will catch that little planet uh, very, very easily. Now, if we wait until it gets darker, what else is there to see? So, of course, Mercury and Venus will uh, go uh, and sink, follow the sun in the west. And above that area, maybe if I just go one hour before like that, you'll see above there'll be three other star-like objects that'll greet your eye. Very easy to see. The one on the left is actually another planet. It's orange in color, and that's planet Mars. And then just next to it, are two almost equally brilliant stars. One's called Pollux, the other one Castor. These are what we call the Gemini twin stars. They're the lead or the brightest stars of the constellation Gemini. And they each represent the head of one of the twins in this constellation, Pollux and Castor. And they're going to form a, a, a trio with Mars, the planet Mars, this week. So check that out. That is something that will probably greet your eyes. You don't need binoculars. You don't need telescopes. This is something that you can see just with your unaided eyes. All you need, of course, is clear skies towards the west soon after your local sunset. Any time this first week in June is a great time to see this trio all bundled together. And you've probably seen it already and maybe wondered what those three stars are. Well, two of them are indeed uh, bonafide stars, but one of them is a planet, and that's planet Mars. Of course, we hear Mar all about Mars because of the rovers that NASA and China has sent onto the surface of, of, of the red planet, and you can see it for yourself. 
You can't see the rovers, obviously, but you can see the light from that planet. And look at it closely. If you look at Mars very closely, you'll notice that it glows with a, a distinctly orange color. Through a small telescope, it will look like a little tiny disk like that. And if you look at it, you'll see that it has that distinct orangey color, right? Well, that's because of all the iron oxide dust that covers the, uh, the surface of Mars. And that is clearly visible with the naked eye. The sunlight reflects off of it, gives it that orangey distinct color, and that is something that you can see with nothing more than your own eyes looking towards the west, very far to the upper left of where Venus and Mercury are. You'll find those three stars, Mercury, Pollux, and Castor shining. So do check that out in the early evening, maybe about a half hour to an hour. If you wait a little longer, Venus will go down and Mars and, and the, the Gemini twins will be much more visible. Uh, easily visible. So if you wait maybe an hour after your local sunset, you'll see them, but they will sink too. After a couple of hours, they will fade away in the western sky, very low as well. So do catch that show uh, before they go. Now, what else is there to see? Now, we're in late spring in the northern hemisphere, and this is a great time to see, still see some springtime early summer objects and one particular deep sky object because there's no moon in the evening sky we'll we'll talk about the moon in a minute but there is no moon in the evening sky uh this week which means it's perfect time to look for deep sky objects and these are objects beyond our solar system so what i want you to do is look for two very bright stars that are in the east southeastern sky Okay, and if you look high up, you'll see uh, one towards the east, more towards the east, that is Vega, and then another one that will be closer to the south southeast southern sky, and it's an orangey colored star called Arcturus. So you've got two very, very bright stars to see in your sky. Uh, any bright evening this, this week is great. So the next clear night, you can do this. And so you have a good amount of chances to see this this uh, this week. So you've got this two stars. Now, if we kind of draw an imaginary line between these two stars, and about a third the way from the Vega, the star Vega, you hit the constellation Hercules. Now, if I zoom in on Hercules, it's, uh, of course, our mythical hero. He's upside down in the skies here in the Northern Hemisphere. That's how we see it this time of the year. But what particularly is easy to find are fair, fairly bright four stars that form what's called the keystone configuration. I'm marking them out here for you now. And these four stars form kind of like a, a, a lopsided square. Find that, okay? Remember, you're, you're watching to the right of this bright star Vega. Super bright. This is super bright. And these are obviously a lot fainter. You can see this in the planetarium program. But they are easily seen even from suburban skies. So even if you have some light pollution, this is something you should be able to catch as long as you let your eyes adapt to the darkness, maybe about 15 minutes to half hour. But what I want you to look for is this amazing treasure inside this thing. And it's called the Hercules cluster. And there's another one called M92. Both of these objects are what we call globular star clusters. They're one of the most beautiful deep sky treasures that you can find within constellations. And Hercules has two of them. It's really lucky uh, that we have two of them close side by side. And they're fairly easy to track down with binoculars and telescopes. And I'll tell you why. That's because the Hercules cluster is on, along the line of the side of this this lopsided square. So the two bright stars that mark this side of the square, the right side of the square, if you draw an imaginary line between these two stars, you will see about a third the way down from the top star is the Hercules cluster. Now, what does it look like through binoculars? You're going to see what looks like a faint fuzzy ball. I'm going to mark myself off of here because uh, just to show you there, fuzzy ball. Now, if we look at it through a pair uh, or I should say tel t a telescope okay through a telescope it becomes really magical this is what you would see 
fainter version of this, not as bright. This is a photograph, so it's collected a lot more photons of light than your eye would. But a fainter version of this is what you would see through a small backyard telescope using high magnification. And you don't need a strong telescope. Any telescope really will do as long as you've got a good uh, a mount, that sturdy mount that doesn't shake, and you can have a, uh, an eyepiece that gives you a stronger magnification. This is what you'd see. Through binoculars, it'll be a smaller little cotton ball, a little puff ball that you would see. You could see it's circular in shape. And this is about 24,000 light years away, this, uh, this object. And it contains basically a half a million stars, over 500,000 stars. It's basically a city, a giant city in the sky. Uh, that's what you're seeing at 24,000 light years away. It's very far. I mean, it takes 24,000 years, literally, for the light to reach your eye from the Hercules cluster. And if you're watching it through binoculars, again, that's something that um, you would see as well. Something like that, a faint cotton ball uh, that would greet your eye. Again, where are we looking? We're looking on the side of this big square, lopsided square, and you draw an imaginary line between these two stars, and about a third of the way down, you're scanning down with your binoculars, you will see it. And how much of the sky do you see in your binoculars? In an average pair, you'll probably see about that much. You'll see the bright star here. You can't quite, you might be able to get both stars and the bright stars of the side of the square together. Perhaps if you have a low pair of uh, powered binoculars, you might get both of them just, just, and then you'll see that faint cotton ball, the great Hercules cluster, also known as Messier 13 in that grand catalog of for backyard sky watchers of deep sky objects by Charles Messier. It's number 13, Messier 13, the great Hercules cluster. Fantastic deep sky object for binoculars and very much so for backyard telescopes. I don't want you to miss that one. And then if that's not enough, you have another one just above the square makes a nice triangle, an equilateral triangle with the top stars of the square. Again, if I zoom out, look at that. So you've got the lopsided square here, right? And then you see uh, using the above stars here at the top stars of the square, and you draw an imaginary triangle right there. The top of the next vertex of the triangle is M92, another beautiful globular star cluster that's about 27,000 light years away. And here you go, that's what it looks like through a backyard telescope. Uh, a fainter version of that, not so bright. Remember, this is a photograph. It collects a lot more photons of light than your naked eye. But um, this is a beautiful object. It's, it looks quite different from the uh, Hercules cluster. It's tighter group. It has, uh, it'll be hard to resolve even through a telescope, the individual stars at the heart of this globular cluster. But uh, it is a beautiful object. It's the 92nd object in Messier's catalog of deep sky objects. So you've got M M13 and M92, both gracing the constellation Hercules in our late spring, early summer skies across the Northern Hemisphere, all for the taking on any clear night this week. So I want you guys to check that out. The, I will have sky charts for everything that I'm talking about in this uh, show will be on my timeline on Facebook. So do check that out also on Twitter as well. So stay tuned for those this week. Now, if we turn our attention to the early morning sky. So I know some of you guys like to get up early, maybe take that dog for a walk or you're standing at the bus stop waiting to go to work at dawn where it's still pretty dark, what can you see in the early morning? Well, this is what greeted, I think, all of you uh, if you had clear skies and you were up on Tuesday, June 1st, this is what you saw in the early morning. The moon paired up with Jupiter and Saturn off to the right. This is something that will be visible right across the world if you're in the southern hemisphere. The orientation, of course, will be different, but the clustering of these objects will be the same. So you'll have the moon joining Jupiter. That was this morning, June 1st at dawn. What will we see as we move along uh, later this week? So if we magically move this uh, to Wednesday morning, you'll see that the moon will line up beautifully with Jupiter and Saturn. So it'll be kind of a uh, not exactly a perfect alignment, 
but nearly so, and this will be quite eye-catching. So, of course, the moon will be the brightest, followed by Jupiter, extremely bright-colored, creamy-colored star, and then off to the far right of Jupiter will be a much fainter, but still a distinctly, um, you know, very evident star-like object, Saturn. And remember, if you have a telescope, you can see the rings of Saturn. Even a small telescope will show you that. And even a pair of binoculars held very steady will show you the moons of Jupiter. So really a lot of really cool things there. And now a nice observing challenge will come the following day. This is on Thursday morning. Again, maybe about an hour or 45 minutes before your local sunrise, the moon will be paired up with the, the, the planet Neptune. And Neptune is very faint. We're talking about eighth, ninth magnitude. It, you need binoculars at the least to see it. But this is something that will be visible in binoculars. And this is what you'll see through binoculars. Uh, the, you will need to scan the sky above the moon and look for a bluish green little tiny faint disk, a very faint disk with binoculars. And with a small telescope, it'll be easily visible but it looks like a very distinct greenish color, bluish green color, a disc, it's not a star pinpoint, that's planet Neptune. It's amazing that you can see Neptune uh, despite it being amazingly far. I mean, you have to remember that it's 4.5 billion kilometers away, Neptune. It takes light over 250 minutes to reach your eye when you look at Neptune through binoculars and telescopes. So that is an amazing challenge that'll greet you Thursday morning this week. So if you are, um, you know, up for that observing challenge uh, with a telescope or binoculars, that's what will greet you on Thursday. Now, just moving, flashing forward a little bit later, by next week, Monday, if we move all the way, this is through the weekend, you see the moon drawing away from Jupiter and Saturn, much farther away, it's approaching the planet Uranus. And by Monday morning, this is the other ice giant the moon will be close to. And the moon will be low in the eastern horizon. Again, it's tricky time window. It's an observing challenge, but if you have binoculars, you won't need a telescope for this, but binoculars will help. Uh, you'll see Uranus above the moon. If you have very, very clear skies, great observing challenges. Can you find Uranus with the naked eye? It will be just on the verge of naked eye visibility, but you need to have very dark, clear skies to see it. So my advice is use those binoculars. They'll make it a cinch to find Uranus, which looks like a distinct greenish uh, uh, star-like uh, object with binoculars. You might start seeing a hint of its disk, Definitely with a telescope, you'll see it as a disc, and it's quite a bit brighter. It's about 5.8 magnitude, quite a bit brighter than Neptune. So it's a, it's not as challenging. It's something that will be easy to see, but you got to get up early in the morning. About 45 minutes before your local sunrise is when you want to look for this low in the eastern horizon. Uh, it's quite something to see. So busy week again. I'll have sky charts for all of this on my Facebook and Twitter feed, so do stay tuned for that. And if you like this video, it comes out every week, so please do subscribe to my YouTube and Facebook channel, and you won't miss any of my new episodes every Monday, every week. So thank you so much for joining. I hope you stay safe and healthy, and until next time, I wish all of you clear skies. Bye-bye. Thank you.